Phyllis Wheat, born in the Senegal of Gambia area on the west coast of Africa in 1753. Phyllis Wheatley was captured by slave traders at the age of seven and her life would never be the same. She was brought to America and sold to the Wheatley Plantation in Boston, Massachusetts in 1761. Consequently, she was given the name Phyllis after the ship that brought her to the US. Phyllis was the personal servant to Mr. Wheatley's wife, but unlike the ordinary slave, she was educated by the Wheatleys. Specifically, Mary Wheatley, the daughter of Mr. Wheatley, taught Phyllis how to read and write in English. Shortly after, she was reading the Bible and writing poetry. She studied the poetry of Alexander Pope and also learned Latin, French, astronomy, and biology. Her academic success was unthinkable for a slave girl and even uncommon for a young white boy. Because she was so eloquent with her words, she was used as the Wheatley's entertainment when they would have guests in their home. She was often isolated from the other slaves on the plantation. She was given some privilege, but was always reminded that she was a slave. Phyllis was a young black slave girl living in a white world where she was intellectually superior to her white counterpart, but she could never show it. Around the age of 13 or 14, Phyllis published her first poem, which debuted in the Newport Mercury newspaper. With the help of the English Countess of Huntington, Phyllis was able to publish her first book of poems titled Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral. Her publication made her the first African-American slave and African-American woman to publish a book of poems. Phyllis's poetic style was a mixture of elegaic poetry and short epic style. It was also influenced by Alexander Pope and Thomas Gray. In 1775, Phyllis Wheatley became a household name in the US and in England when she wrote a poem praising George Washington and his leadership abilities. A year later, when Washington was president of the United States, Phyllis accepted an invitation to visit the president in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Phyllis showed her admiration for Washington, but she still felt that slavery was inhumane and unnecessary. She would travel to London, England as a way to help promote her work since she was able to grow a following in England. While working in London, Phyllis would receive medical treatment for medical issues she battled for a while. Upon returning home in 1778, Phyllis would learn that her master John Wheatley died along with his wife and she was no longer a slave. Later in 1778, she would marry John Peters and the couple would fight adversity throughout their marriage. All three of their children died at birth and Phyllis found it difficult to find a publisher for her writings. She would work as a maid in a boarding house and she and her husband worked to survive their impoverished conditions. December 5, 1784, Phyllis died helping to set the literary foundation for future African American writers, men and women. Phyllis was able to accomplish most of her literary feats as a slave girl. Even though she was free later in life, race would once again make it difficult for her. She capitalized upon an opportunity to learn and she managed to make history in doing so. During a time where the average black person in America was killed for wanting to learn to read, Phyllis Wheatley was breaking literary barriers and making the world take notice. She is an inspiration to black writers around the globe, young and old. Miss Phyllis Wheatley, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com.